All right, I just left Sandefjord uh, on the E18 heading towards Oslo, doing a healthy 110 kilometers an hour, roughly, uh, high speed limit in Norway as far as I'm aware. And uh, my hopes for today, uh, today being, I think, either the 17th or the 18th of September 2016, uh, my hope is to uh, reach the Danish, Danish, Danish border, if I'm lucky, might not make it, it's, uh, to get a bit halfway there, it's about four hours drive, it's relatively late, three in the afternoon, uh, but uh, I think I might have a chance if I keep a healthy pace, uh, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, the further into Sweden we get, the faster the roads are going to get as well. Uh, I'm used to driving Norwegian roads you now, so uh, 80 kilometers now has been the standard for the last couple of weeks. So we'll see where we end up. Uh, perhaps Denmark, who knows? It would be nice though to do the other uh, in light conditions, but uh, it's still relatively early in the year. It stays light quite late, so. I think we might have a chance. We'll see what happens. Welcome to E18 passing Oslo. This is uh, a pretty nice stretch of road. I've been here a couple of times before. In this very vehicle even. It's a pretty nice road. You just pass, oh, as you can see, right by the marina. It's running right along the coast all the way. And uh, you get an excellent view into a fjord at a couple of places. And welcome to Oslo. E18 turning into the E6 leading towards Sweden. And yeah, I almost forgot we have this stretch of E18. That's just this tiny little three lane road leading through the outskirts of Oslo. And this usually goes really slow, it's turning into 50 kilometers an hour over there and all leasing a lane. Traffic lights, pedestrians, you name it, and excellent vistas. And I do believe those Euro signs say Sweden. Yes, indeed. So now we're in Sweden again. Sweet. Okay, look, a Tesla gas station. Lots of Tesla gas stations. Alright, having a short break in Uddevalla in Sweden. I uh, just have a GPS to navigate to the Oilersund Bridge and it's telling me 379 kilometers for four hours. And it's about uh, 9 in the evening, I think. No, 8 local time. So, mm, kind of torn whether or not I'm going to make the bridge tonight. Either way, it's going to be pitch black when I get there. So, uh, we'll see but time to get a move on. And welcome to Jötebori in the middle of the night. Another three hours to go. Certainly going to be pitch black if we get to Denmark today. And uh, since we're in Sweden, there's an Ikea for you. All right, so Sweden, as compared to Norway from a driving standpoint, to entirely 100% different countries. Uh, I couldn't imagine a bigger difference. So in Norway, as, as, if you've been watching this series, you've seen the tiny little teensy roads going up and down, and left and right, so fast with a time lapse camera can't keep up. But in Sweden, it's the exact opposite. I haven't yet uh, had to drive on a road that's less than four lanes to each way. It's just been this 100-110 uh, km per hour motorway for hundreds of kilometers, many hundreds, and it just keeps on going. And uh, from a productivity standpoint, this is excellent. It's really relaxing to drive. You feel very, very safe doing it since you don't have to really think about it. But on the other hand, 
uh, balloon-eating me, uh, the hooligan, uh, it thinks it's of course boring. There, there's nothing to do. You could go fast if you had a fast bike or fast car, which indeed I do have, but uh, obviously not this one. And it just keeps on going straight. I'm doing 95 just to keep the horrible engine noise down. People are passing me. It's calm. It's nice. It's slow paced. Everyone's got a well adjusted headlights, you don't get dazed. It's just a pleasant experience, but boring. Very boring. But then on the other hand, I'm driving in the middle of the night now, there is traffic. If I were doing this in Norway with this amount of traffic uh, on any of the northern roads, like north of Oslo or Bergen basically, uh, this would be an incredibly exhausting experience because you basically have to give a lot of consideration to every single vehicle you meet because the road's just so narrow that you have to just be edging on the right side of the road in order not to hit it, especially with trucks. And what do I find if not the only mountain in southern Sweden? And this is as fast as it'll go. I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but someone's had a major whoopsie on the road because there are two skid marks, uh, the thin ones. They've been going on, they've ever ventured off to the side again. These have been going on for like 20 kilometers now. Oh, now they're back on the road. Middle of a lane. Someone must have had failed trailer brakes or something. But the weird thing is they seem to have noticed it because they'd be off to, off to the side every now and then. And then they just keep on going. And they just keep on going. What the hell? Who drives around with locked trailer brakes? Or some... I'm not... I can't even imagine what would have this kind of ultra skinny ties to leave these marks. Alright, we are getting somewhere because I can see signs to Copenhagen. Alright, we are now just on the brink of leaving Sweden. So, today is going to be another day where we've just run through Sweden disregarding it as much as possible. Anyway, this here green E20 sign is the Odersund Bridge. And I've set a target just somewhere, a few kilometers into Denmark. And uh, we're about to be on our way. Uh, I had to take a, a bit of a stop right here because I saw the sign said last exit in Sweden and uh, I had to download a map. I'm not certain if Denmark is included in my uh, mobile um, uh, connection thingy, so I took the safe route, so now I've got all the maps I need. So let's just get on the road again. Copenhagen. Right, I've never driven a manual toll road before, so let's see how this goes. I did not manage to read the last sign, so... Well, I see. So there seem to be different auto pass and manual lanes, but there are two different kinds of manual ones. One is a picture of what I think is a credit card. But I'm not sure. Oh, we'll just go on the manual one because there's no one else around. Hello there, I hope I'm here for that. Is this manual betalning? Yes. Alltså, är de andra de där blåa skyltarna, är det liksom någon slags kreditkortsautomat funderat? Ja, vi ska gå kreditkort. Okej, okay, men alltså det, är det någon extra avgift på den här manuella? Okej. Okay. Så... Jag menar, där skulle du backa tillbaka och köra vi in där stället, det, det funkar ju inte så. Nej, nej. Nå, nu, nu är det någon bara kommer. Yeah. Så, där, där är mitt bankkort om det är det du vill ha. 
Tak, tak. Okay, I think we got through that. So that guy was a southern Swedish person. I didn't understand a word he said. Uh, I think he charged me some stupid high of some, but uh, I'm not allowed to stop right here, so I cannot check it. Oh well. The price for travel, I guess. But the thing is, I don't have to enter the code on my credit card. Which surprised me a lot. I don't have one of those NFC thingies. That's really weird. Oh well, he passed me. Guess that's the important part. So now, we're certainly moving into Denmark. I've got no idea when the bridge is going to start. So I think that is what uh, the Eurotone bridge looks like uh, in pitch blackness on my cheap camcorder. <laughs> seven local time and I finally found uh, some kind of place to camp it's uh, uh, like an official campground thing uh, which has been quite trampled by tourists during the summer I'm frankly not certain if the main ingredient in the ground is poo or vomit but uh, it works it's uh, quite uh, secluded don't think I'm gonna have any company although there certainly has been some company going on around here during the summer because uh, the place is horrid but yeah I just need to sleep uh, I'm dead driving 12 hours 